Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now apologies to those of you who saw the previous iteration of this video which I uploaded a few hours ago. Um, I'm really sorry, I hadn't noticed when I put the video up that a, a part way through it um, the sound was no longer syncing with the images. Um, thank you to those who pointed this out to me. I did try to resolve the problem in the editing software but unfortunately Fortunately, I couldn't fix it. So what I'm going to do is simply reshoot the thing. So if the Germans were not very happy with how they were doing in the first five turns of the game, well, by some freak incident of time travel, they now have another chance. So just to pick up where I left off in the previous video, um, I'd filled out all the various bits of awkwardly boring but necessary paperwork that uh, is a prerequisite for a military operation like this. I'd completed the German side, as you can see. Um, what I did to make things a bit fair is that I drew up six iterations of, uh, of the, the possible German responses and deployments, and I rolled the dice to see which one they would choose. So there are some responses they've made that will probably make sense, some which may be a bit off, but I hope that overall it's been fair. I'm mainly going to be narrating this mission from the Allied perspective, with the Germans turning up as a nasty surprise, although I will be controlling uh, their decisions in what I hope is a, a reasonable manner. So here on the left, we've got our formation of six B-17s. One of them is an ace crew. I have randomized them with the gray counters. So they're setting off on their way to the target. Um, because of the short range of the Spitfires, I decided that they should be the escort at the very start of the mission. So we've, we've got them escorting them over the channel and into German territory. Now, I was hoping that there would be a quiet flight uh, over the channel and North Sea. But I'm afraid I was to be disappointed because the uh, more enterprising Germans, particularly those who have uh, set out from their coastal bases, have decided that they're going to try and disrupt the formation right from the get-go. So for the escorting Spitfires, there's going to be no rest because there's interceptors heading up to come at the formation already. And just to make life even worse for the Allies, um, the Germans have an ace pilot in their flight, their Schroer over there, and his abilities include burst rating, which is really not what I want to see. Uh, and he's also got the horsepower bonus, which is very helpful to him at high altitude, much less helpful to me. So we'll see how we go. Also, to add insult to injury, it seems that the Germans have won the toss this time round, so... Schroer and his buddy get to go first. So, first thing they're going to do, understandably, is jettison their drop tanks because they really don't want to be lugging those around um, when they get into this mission. So they get rid of their drop tanks. It's not actually such a massive penalty for them because, as you can see from the record sheet, They've got 10 fuel points in their internal tanks and their drop tanks were only worth five. Even better news for them is because they've got the drop on us, they can go straight for the bomber formation and hope that they uh, can pick a target or two off before the fighters can react. So let's see what happens. I'm going to... Um, because, of course, for the Germans at this stage in the mission, one B-17 is as good as the next. So I'm going to roll a dice for it, and they get a three. They're going to go for the third bomber along. So because it's the first turn of the game, the wingman can't participate, but Schroer is going to try and go in. Now he's going to, he's not bothered because all the bombers are the same, so he's not going to expend his manoeuvre card just yet but he's announced his intention to go for that B-17. The Spitfires, despite the presence of the drop tanks, can try to react. Um, and I think they're definitely going to intervene. So the lead Spitfire is going to play a manoeuvre card because we do want to keep him away from the bombers. 
um, Schroer is probably just going to laugh contemptuously and play his full throttle card to counter the manoeuvre. Um, the Brits can't counter that, so Schroer has got past them. The only consolation is... Actually, there isn't one, really. <laughs> it was a good attempt by the Spitfires, but loaded as they are, it's not really going to happen. So Schroer's going in, and he's going to do a head-on attack, because against the massed firepower of the B-17s, approaching from the sides or astern is a really, really dangerous prospect. So the B-17s will draw their mini hand. It's only one card, and I'm just going to see whose crew it is. It is No, it's not my ace crew. So they get one card for the bomber, and one each turret support for the others. So that's a six-card mini hand. It's not too bad. So in comes Schroer. He has his burst advantage, which makes it two. Add another two because he's attacking a heavy bomber, but subtract one because it's a head-on attack. So when the dust settles, he basically has a burst rating of three. He's going to begin his move by playing a maneuver card to up the burst rating to four. <laughs> so this... The bomber is going to respond very aggressively with an in my sights, the worst in my sights that can be played. So that happens. Um, Schroer is in a bit of a pickle. He must counter that, otherwise he's a dead man. He doesn't want to waste his ace pilot. Um, so he's going to expend his full throttle counter, with the power burst. Power boost, I should say. But he does have to discard a card for doing that. So he's going to lose his scissors card because he doesn't really need that. So I'll take those away. And he has four bursts now. Just to speed things up, because I know that the bomber's remaining hand is effectively useless, I'm just going to put those to one side and let Schroer take all of his shots in succession. So two hits, another two hits, and one hit. He rakes that poor bomber and does a total of five damage. Luckily, being a big burly B-17, it doesn't feel it too much. <laughs> and then well satisfied with his work, he zooms off, drawing his hand, sorry, um, Drawing some replacement cards. Okay, that wasn't a great start for the Allies, but at least it's the Spitfire's turn now, and they can follow the Germans' excellent example and jettison their drop tanks to give themselves a better chance. Now, unfortunately for the Allies, this is a much more serious sacrifice. As you can see from the Spitfire's fuel log, they had 10 fuel in their drop tanks, which is more than they've got in their internal fuel. So the Spitfires have just made a big sacrifice to their endurance there. But it is very necessary if they want to try and keep the Germans away from the bombers. So the British wingman is going to go straight for Schroer. And unfortunately draws a very unhelpful hand of cards. The British leader is going to operate against the same target, but at the moment all he can do is take pot shots from a distance, so that's what he's going to do. Going to play an in my sights for two hits. Um, Schroer doesn't want to waste his ace pilot, so he's going to counter with a tight turn. Um, the British pilot, very desperate to scare the German off, will counter with his own tight turn. And now Schroer is left with an awkward choice. That ace pilot is a very valuable card to have. But if he plays it, uh, yes, he may not have much insurance for later in the game. That is only two hits on the British in my sights card. So he decides he's going to take a chance and accept the damage. Hopefully he won't regret that later. 
I mean, personally, I hope you will regret it later, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But that effectively ends the British turn because there's not much more they can do with that hand. So they draw two cards because they're at high altitude. And as we move away from the end of turn one, I have to do fuel reductions. Now you can see the advantage of being an interceptor or a defending fighter. The Germans have expended three fuel out of their total of ten. The British have had to extend five, uh, sorry, expend five because they've been in combat, so they're reduced to four. So at best, if they really push it, they have only two turns left, whereas the Germans can hang around a bit longer than that. So moving into the second turn. The Germans are still unengaged by the British and they're thinking they're going to harass the bombers a bit more. The wingman is going to have a go. And he says he's going to have a go at that bomber playing a manu... Uh, oh wait, no, he's going to see if he can get a uh, provoke a reaction from the British first. This is a feint, effectively. The British leader, not knowing what the wingman has in his hand plays a manoeuvre card to force the attack onto himself. So in effect, he's fallen for the German trick. No attack develops and he's had to lose a manoeuvre card. They're being very clever today. Now, Schroer, with his reduced but still very potent hand, is going to play a manoeuvre card to ensure that he gets that bomber uh, actually, he just needs to make the declaration first, but the British leader can't intervene anymore. So Schroer is going to make sure of his target and incidentally get a somewhat superfluous burst uh, rating. He's coming in from the front as before because he knows and does have a lot of respect for the firepower that those bombers have. So six cards for the bomber again. Now Schroer just played his manoeuvre card, so the bomber is going to respond to that. But it's going to, and it's going to start off with a really strong attack, an out of the sun card. Now this, and this pre prevents, sorry, my words, I'm stumbling today. <laughs> This presents Schroer with a bit of difficulty because he only has these two cards left. If he presses his attack, he'll do two damage to the bomber, but he'll take three hits, which will leave his fighter an absolute wreck. If he plays his ace pilot card to dodge the attack, he then has to discard this card. The question is, what's worth doing? If he puts his attack through, it gives the bomber seven damage, which is significant, but he's effectively taken himself out of the fight. He'll, he'll be reduced to near impotence with the state his plane will be in. Um, Schroer is going to decide to err on the side of caution, so he's going to cancel the attack and accept that he has to discard his card. And so effectively, the bomber has shooed him off with gunfire. So he'd drop his replacement hand and hope for a better opportunity next time. Ooh, he made the right decision there. That's going to be a nasty turn for the Allies next turn. Now, in the meantime, the British are still going to try and scrape those German fighters off the US bomber formation. So again, the wingman is going to try and pick on Schroer. And he's going to play a manoeuvre card. Um, Schroer is really short on defensive cards, so reluctantly he's going to let this happen for now. Wingman can't do anything with that card, so it goes off to one side. And now the British leader is well set up 
but annoyingly does not have much that he can actually do except carry on plinking. So he'll try for a pinpoint shot. It's a very weak attack, but Schroer can't really afford to let it through because if he gets another hit, his fighter is flipped to its damaged side. So grumbling about this, he plays his chop throttle card. And luckily for him, the British pilot can't counter it. So those go off to one side. And it's not been a terribly satisfying turn for the British, but at least they are keeping the German interceptors pinned down. And so getting to the end of turn two. And we'll just take another look at the fuel log. The British situation is now really desperate. Uh, oh, in fact, that should be a zero. So, yes, the, the British are stuck now. They are going to have to disengage, fuel disengagement at the end of this turn, and it will be at a disadvantage, whereas the Germans still have enough fuel for at least another turn. So I'll just fetch the disengagement table. The British wingman will go first. And he draws an in my sights one burst. Looking at the disengagement table, that's a bit of a risky thing to have. His leader is tailing, so that puts him down two levels. But it is a fuel disengagement, so he has to go up one. He still makes it out with no problems. Now the leader. He gets a tight turn. That's actually a very safe card to have because he's well within the safe escape bracket. So both British fighters successfully disengage, but it's a bit of a sad thing because it means that the bomber formation is now fearfully exposed. And they'll have to wait until the next batch of Allied fighters turn up. So a lucky escape for Schroer there. His tormentors had to disappear when they did. And now we move into the next turn. So the bomber formation is effectively unguarded. Just for our reference, and I'll pick up that pencil that I've just sent flying. The next Allied reinforcements aren't going to turn up until 5TB, so that's still a couple of turns away, unfortunately. That is not good news at all. So Schroer's wingman is going to attempt to go for that bomber again, the damaged one. There's no fighters to get in his way, so he's just going to do it. And the bomber will hopefully be able to shoo him away. But let's see what he gets. Um, as a standard, I'm always making head-on attacks with the German fighters because these are the least risky. Ooh, that's a fairly weak hand. So the German comes in and he plays his Out of the Sun card, which is a devastatingly powerful attack. It's tempting for the bomber to try and hit him, but I think it's more valuable if they throw his aim off. So that's what the bomber's going to do. The gunfire is just enough to throw the pilot off his attack run, and the disappointed wingman has to head off. Schroer now comes in again. He's going to make a head-on attack against the same plane. He's not too worried about this card. That's the one he wants to play. So, another mini hand for the B-17. Oh dear, 
this is not good. They can shoot back, but effectively, if that blow lands, they're doomed, and I think they're doomed. So Schroer comes in, staking everything on an in my oops, in my sights fuel tank hit. And the bomber retaliates with that, knowing it's got nothing else. Um, ooh, we may have an almost mutual destruction assured here. So the bomber suffers a fuel tank hit. There's nothing the Allies can do about that. So one unfortunate B-17 goes tumbling out of the formation. That's very bad news for the Allies to lose one already. But they get some measure of revenge because Schroer can't do anything about the counterfire. So in making his expert attack, he's taken two hits and his plane is now damaged. That's going to have rather serious implications depending on whether he decides to make a fuel disengagement or not. So I'll take that away. So that was a very dramatic exchange. And of course, Schroer only gets two cards now be oops, because of the damage to his plane. So that's the end of that turn. And the Germans have to mark off more fuel used. Now the Germans only have one fuel point left and Schroer is already damaged. So I'm thinking in terms of the victory points and what he's still able to do, prudence probably demands he should withdraw. And I think that's the most sensible course for them. So as with their British colleagues, they're going to make a disengagement uh, manoeuvre, starting with the wingman. So he gets an in my sights one burst. And looking at the table, he gets away with it because there's no fighters present and it's not a fuel disengagement. So he heads for home. And now for sure, he's got a clouds, okay. Oh, that's a bit borderline. Let's see. But there are no enemy fighters. And even though he's damaged, he's very much in the safe escape bracket. So the Allies have the satisfaction of damaging a Messerschmitt. But it's a very poor exchange for a B-17. So we now move on to the next turn. Now, this is a quiet one for the Allies because neither they nor the Luftwaffe have any fighters arriving this turn. So the bomber crews breathe a bit of a sigh of relief as it just moves into the next turn. And much to their joy, because it's now fifth target bound turn, 5TB that is, counting backwards. Um, so it's 5TB now and... The P-47s arrive, thank goodness. Oh yes, must take away Zem uh, must take away Schroer's cards while I'm at it. So Zemka arrives at high altitude. As he's the only element he is able to claim the um, initiative slot. It's going to get a full throttle counter for him. And I just need to remember to deduct the fuel that they've already expended getting here. So there we go. The P-47s are here but they've emptied more than half of their drop tanks uh, getting to the rendezvous with the bombers. Um, still no sign of any Germans, but there's some Fokker Wolf 190s heading in. It's just that we don't know about them yet. 
So as per the rules, I give Zemka his hand, but I don't look at it because an aircraft that's loaded, oh yes, drop tanks. An aircraft that is loaded can't really do anything with its hand unless it's interacting with another aircraft, usually through being attacked or intervening if you're protecting bombers. I do apologise, everyone. My hay fever is getting the better of me today. So apologies for any disgusting noises in the background. So much to the relief of both the Allied fighter pilots and the bomber crews, that turn passes with no incident either. There's no German fighters in the sky. But what it does mean is that the fighters have to burn more fuel. Zemke and his boys are looking at their fuel gauges and they see that their drop tanks are pretty much down to nil. And we come to the start of the next game turn where finally, and we're well over the Reich now, so it's not surprising, a flight of Fokker Wolf 190s decides to join the party. So these two come in. No ace pilots or anything nasty with them, thankfully. And they come in at high altitude as well. And like their American counterparts, they have drop tanks. However, I'm just going to draw to see when they arrive. That's a red bordered card. That means they arrive after the US player would have had a chance to take an action. So he can't actually do anything to them this turn, which is a little bit unfortunate. The only thing they can do is if the Germans make a move on one of the bombers, they can attempt to intervene. Uh, and of course, the Germans are going to make a move on one of the bombers. So I'll turn Zemka's hand over to remind me. So rolling the dice again. Um, I've got a six this time. However... I know there's a blank slot, but let's just keep it as a six until it causes problems. So the German wingman is singling out this bomber, which is my ace crew bomber. Nice. I might get a chance to put these guys through their paces. So drawing his mini hand to start with. The German says he's going to go for that bomber. Um, Zemke is not having it and is going to inter intervene decisively, he hopes. And the wingman cannot proceed with his attacks. He's got nothing to stop that manoeuvre. But it was, again, like the previous German flight, a very good feint which forced Zemke to waste a card. Now... The German leader is going to go in. They're still unaware that that's my ace crew, so he's going to roll a dice like his wingman did to see who he goes for. And he has got a one, so he's going to attack that bomber. Is there going to be any preemptive action from Zemke? Yes, there is. He's going to try and force the attack onto himself by interposing his plane between the oncoming German. So he plays a manoeuvre card, which the German cannot parry, so he's going to give Zemke his wish. I think Zemke might regret this. The German's going to play a manoeuvre card to start with. Um, Zemke cannot actually respond, so he is now... Uh... Oh, sorry, I forgot. The German's... The Germans did jettison their drop tanks. It was the obvious thing to do. I'm sorry for forgetting to do it there. So, yeah, that's Zemke's hand. That's the German hand. So he has just become disadvantaged, which is really not great. Um, 
and the German is going to play another manoeuvring card on him. He wants to make sure of his target. Let's clear that other one away. So the German player has got a lot of bursts to play with. A total of five, in fact. That's quite painful. So he's going to start with the weak one and see how he gets on. Uh, not knowing what he has in his hand, Zemka is going to parry that first one with a barrel roll. If I feel I can safely do it in these games, I normally try and keep my aircraft as perfectly undamaged for as long as I can. Uh, unfortunately for Zemka, the German has plenty of follow-up, so he's going to go for this as well. Uh, another two hits. Now, ah, uh, I've only got my chop throttle card. Um, hmm. I think Zemka will expend his full throttle trying to get away from this one. But not in the least bit put off, the Fokker Wolf is going to try its last attack, which inflicts three damage. Now, I can take it. I'm a big, rugged P-47. And because I only have one defensive card left, I'm going to hang on to it and just take it. So... The shots slam into my poor aircraft and quite happy with what he's just achieved. The German pilot draws his cards. So that's not great. The Germans have got the upper hand in terms of fighting against my aircraft. But on the plus side, they're not attacking the bombers. So although I'm getting a bit of a tough time over it, we are doing our jobs. And with fuel expenditure, we do have an advantage over the Fokker Wolves because by dropping their fuel tanks, they lost ten of their um, uh, ten of their fuel points at one go and have lost another three. Uh, I realise I've just misrecorded that. That should be. A 16 because Zemka and his friend are now running on empty drop tanks and they've begun using their internal fuel. So next turn they will most certainly be dropping those empty encumbrances. But for now we move on to the next turn. Now I realise this is getting a, a bit long so I'm going to call it there on something of a cliffhanger. So just to sum up the situation, um, seven, six turns into the game, the B-17 formation has very regrettably lost one of its planes to a very daring German attack. And the latest wave of escorting fighters is getting heavily tangled with German interceptors. It hasn't started off very well for the US with this one, but as I said earlier, they are keeping the Germans busy and every moment the German interceptors waste tangling with US fighters, they're not attacking the bombers, which is what I really want. So when I come back in the next video, when we continue this, um, we will hopefully take it up to the over-target phase and a bit beyond. And I really look forward to seeing um, how we go with that. But for the moment, I'll just say thank you very much to all of you who are following this series. Um, Really appreciate having your company, as always. Um, to those of you who are uh, here for Down in Flames, my fellow aerial veterans, uh, a big salute and a cheerful wave to you. I hope this uh, has been both entertaining and interesting for you. And I do hope you'll continue joining me in uh, for the rest of this mission. Um, to those of you who might have wandered into my channel for the first time, if this is your first video uh, of mine that you're watching, a very warm welcome to you. Um, I hope that if it's uh, Down in Flames that has brought you here, you will enjoy checking out the other videos I've done on this excellent game on the channel. If it's wargaming in general, then you're more than welcome. Please have a wander around. I hope you find something uh, else that you like as well as this. Um, 
But whoever you are and wherever you're tuning in from, it's really, really good to see you. Thank you again for your company. And I will look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks and goodbye for now.